Today I want to talk about the uh, Kotlin programming language. Somebody asked me, what do you think Kotlin's going to be doing in 2019? Well, it's going to be pretty good, I think, for Kotlin. So just in case you don't know, Kotlin is a language that's a few years old, but about a year or so ago, Google officially endorsed it, put their stamp of approval on it. Kotlin was invented by a company called Jet Brains, who are very famous for producing some of the best, arguably the best integrated development environments that you see out there. They have products like IntelliJ for Java, PyCharm for Python, PHP Storm for PHP, etc., etc. So they're a very good company with a long track record of producing excellent product. So they put out Kotlin as a, a light and nimble language to complement, if not replace Java. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Kotlin is going to replace Java anytime soon, but I think there's a few things about Kotlin and something that happened very recently in the Java world that suggests to me that Kotlin is going to do very, 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 very well going forward. Does that mean that you're going to have to drop Java and drop everything and go Kotlin? No, 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 no. My overall principle of programming and software development, something I keep talking about, is that the languages at the end of the day only matter insofar as the type of work you're looking for and the type of jobs that you're going to be doing. So many languages out there today are very viable solutions in terms of in terms of being able to produce good software. There's no question about that. So I wouldn't get too anxious about choosing the right language because it changes depending on the type of work you're doing, the type of jobs you're looking to get, where you live. In certain parts of the world, Java may be the language of choice. In other parts of the world, it could be c -sharp .net, or it could be PHP, whatever. So don't get too caught up in that. One of the main reasons you don't want to get too caught up in that is because at the end of the day, let's say you learn Java and you find that uh, the Java jobs disappear and you can't find Java jobs and all they're asking for are C-sharp programmers. For you to move from Java to C-sharp is trivial. It's trivial. To you, for you to move from Java to JavaScript to Python to PHP is trivial. Not very difficult because all these languages share so many qualities but it doesn't really matter. And advanced programmers do not think in terms of languages. Noob programmers will think in terms of languages, in terms of, oh my god, I, my career is based on this language or that language. The reality of the situation, advanced developers will move from language to language, from framework to framework, depending on the requirements of the job at hand, depending on where the work is. So don't get too caught up in that. Okay, so let's talk about the merits of the Kotlin language, how it is positioned relative to Java. What are the technical advantages that Kotlin presents? So, number one, Kotlin is kind of like Java's 
responds to SWIFT in the sense that Objective-C was used to build iOS apps and then Apple said we needed a later, nimbler language, so they came up with Swift. Now Swift pretty much has replaced Objective-C in terms of the language of choice to develop iOS apps with. Kotlin does the same thing for Java. You write your Kotlin code, it's much nimbler, it's much faster. You can get a lot of things, a lot of things done. It's much uh, easier to be productive with Kotlin relative to Java. And this is from a lot of heavy duty heavy-duty, highly experienced Java programmers will tell you this. So that is the case. Kotlin can be used to create Android apps. It could be used to create uh, server-side Java apps. It could actually even be used, you write your Kotlin, it compiles down for down to JavaScript, apparently, so you can use it to write your front-end uh, programming code for the web browser. So it's quite a flexible language in that regard. It also, Kotlin, compiles down to bytecode, so that's uh, the level code below Java. When you write Java code, just so that you know, Java is actually compiled down to something called bytecode. And uh, it, 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 whereas C Sharp does the same thing as well in the .NET framework, it not doesn't go down to bytecode, it goes down to a lower level language if it was called all of a sudden. So you see that Kotlin, it provides you the speed advantages in terms of runtime of Java, since it compiles down to the same code in the end, but it gives you a lot of uh, programming advantages in that in that Kotlin is a lighter, nimbler language, just like with Swift. Swift is a lighter, nimbler language than Objective C. Now, which I've learned over the last two decades of being involved in the software game that lighter languages, nimbler languages tend to win out over heavier, more verbose languages. Even if there are technical or speed advantages with the slower to write languages, it doesn't matter. Lighter, easier to write languages typically win in the end. Why? Because at the end of the day, computers are so powerful these days and every year they get more and more powerful that the uh, slower running languages, the slower running languages, typically with the exception of Ruby, typically the slower running languages, the advantage of the, uh, the fact that they can be written so quickly outweigh the fact that they're slower at running because every year they get faster and faster because computers are getting faster and faster. Think about it. Today's iPhone, uh, iPhone 10, whatever it is, that processor will outdo many laptop processors from just a few years ago. And in fact, apparently that processor can match many laptop processors that people use today. So if you think about that by extension, you can look at the little chip in an, in an iPhone will outperform a lot of server processors from seven years ago. So speed of runtime is much less of a critical issue today than it was 20 years ago, so I wouldn't be too concerned about that. One of the biggest reasons that I think Kotlin is going to make some major inroads into 2019, it has nothing to do with the tech in of itself, it has nothing to do with the merits of the language itself, although that has to be there. The one big reason I think that it's going to make some major inroads is because of what Oracle did with Java this year, starting in January 2019, uh, for a lot of server-side applications if you want to use the officially supported Java from Oracle, if you don't know, Oracle bought Java from Sun Microsystems a while back, you're going to have to pay Oracle a license. Now, this may have, this is can be bypassed using the Open GD, JDK, so you don't necessarily have to pay Oracle a license. But what this does, Oracle's move, it creates a kind of a stink on Java. Leaves, leaves a bad taste in a lot of developers' mouths. And when that happens, they're gonna start looking around at alternatives. Even though it may, you can argue that Oracle's licensing plans will not impact most Java developers, will probably have no impact whatsoever, doesn't matter. That specter is there now, it's been put out there. So people are gonna be looking at things like Kotlin and say, well, you know, Kotlin, it doesn't fall under that umbrella. 
and uh, we, has, we also have all the other advantage of faster, easier to write Kotlin versus Java, and bing, bang, bing, away you go. So the final question about Kotlin, where are the jobs in Kotlin? As I said before, and as I said on many videos, as professional developers, you shouldn't get caught up in being in a language camp. You're not a Java programmer, you're not a Kotlin programmer, you're not a C-sharp programmer, you're not a PHP programmer, you're a programmer. Professional developers at a high level don't care about the languages so much. What they do is they look at, a, they look at the job at hand and they learn whatever language and frameworks and libraries they need to accomplish that particular task. In my final years as a freelance web developer, I would literally, or developer, I would literally go into a uh, client's office, sit down, get the specs for the job, and then I would decide what language and framework I would use. And sometimes I would use a language or framework I've never used before because it was just best suited for that particular job. So I suggest that you try to get to that position. I try to get that position. So when you're choosing a language, you should choose A, what kind of work you want to do, uh, B, um, uh, whether there's jobs or opportunities and where you happen to live in that regard, and uh, what's the final opportunity? Well, there you go. Those are the two most important things, right? Whether, you know, there's work and whether you want to do that kind of programming, because AI programming is very different from web stack programming, which is very different from uh, thick client programming. So there you have it. Kotlin is going to do very well in 2019. I think uh, the fact that software developers, Java developers are excited about Kotlin in of itself is uh, the base for it all. But you add in the Oracle licensing issue that adds fuel to the fire. So I think you're going to expect good things with Kotlin. All right, ciao.